Hello guys. So this is part two of the business organization video that I made earlier. So if you missed my first video, please go watch it. We basically spoke about the linguistic, the language, terminologies, and and um, business. We talked about capital. We talked about sole proprietorship, profit, personal liability, corporation, shares of stock, share orders, limited liability, private and public corporation. Now I want to take uh, a step back to show you how I solve these two questions because there's also some math associated with, with with both. Now let's take a look at the first one. The first one is an example, it's just a warm up. Find two consecutive numbers, integers, such that the sum of three times the first and four times the second is 25. That's the first one. The second one says, David owns a business. He invests $30,000 in, in a partnership that has four other partners. Does he really own it then? Hmm. The total investment is $480,000. What percent of the business does David owns? Okay, so I mean the the math is both pretty simple in both. You're expected to know how to do both types of questions in general. So let's um let's see how to do the first one. Now, before I show you the answer, I want to talk about consecutive integers. What are consecutive integers? When that word comes to you, what do you think of when you hear consecutive integers? Now, I'll, I'll give you some time to think about it. Pause the video to think about what are examples of consecutive integers. For some of you who know, examples are like 1, 2, 3. These are consecutive integers. 4, 5. It goes on. They're consecutive, meaning that they right after each other. Odd, even, odd, even, whatever. And the difference between them is the same throughout. So 2 minus 1 is 1. 3 minus 2 is 1. 1. That's actually that's what, that's what you call an arithmetic sequence. 4 minus 3 is 1. 5 minus 4 is 1. Because the difference between them is the same throughout. So but 4 and 5 are consecutive integers. 3 and 4 are consecutive integers. 2 and 3 are consecutive integers. Uh, 1 and 2 are consecutive integers. Um, but just as well, as well as 11 and 12, it's consecutive integers. Again, the difference between them is 1. The difference between both of them is 1. 67 and 68 are consecutive integers. You, do you see that? The difference between them is always 1. 100 and 100 and 101 are consecutive integers. The difference between them is 1. Let's see how to solve this question. So here I wrote, let me get my pen. Here I wrote my first equation. 3x plus 4y equals 24. Why? Because the question says, find two consecutive integers such that the sum of three times the first and four times the second is 25. So three times the first and four times the second. Now it's up to you uh, if you want x to be the first or y to be the first. I chose y to be, uh, the, to be the second and x to be the first. If y is the second consecutive number, that means y is greater than x. Take a look at my examples here. Oh, it went away. Let me do it again. I said 3 and 4. So my x, in this case, is 3, and my y is 4. So y is always greater than x. 10 and 11. y, this is my y again, and this is my x. Notice that. Uh, 57 and 58, consecutive integers. Again, this is my y. And this is my x. So the so the question so I'm basically I basically set up the equation based on what the question is saying for the first one, as you can see. Now, again, examples of consecutive integers: 13 and 14. Examples. So my y is bigger. So again, I said in the last slide I, I said that the difference between them is always one. Yes or no? Yes. So because the difference between them is always one. I can say y minus x equals 1 because the difference between them is always 1. I can say that. Because I can say that, I now have a system of equation uh, where I have two unknowns, x and y, and I have two equations. This can be solved. So I'm, I'm going to add x in both sides. Add x. Add x in both sides. So this one cancels out. 
I'm left with y equals 1 plus x. So what do I do? I'm going to plug this uh, this y. I'm going to plug it in here, right here. I'm going to plug it in. Plug it in. So I have 3x plus 4 times 1 plus x, as you can see, equals 25. So 3x comes down. I distribute. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times x is 4x. I add 3x plus 4x, it gives me 7x, and then I move the 4 to the right. Negative minus 25, mi uh, 25 minus 4, this cancels out. This will, give, this will give me 21. Divide 7 in both sides to get x by itself. x equals 3. Now that x equals 3, I just plug it back in here to get y, and y equals 4. So the two numbers we are talking about all this time, is 3 and 4. If you have questions, please leave a comment. Let's solve the second one. David owns a business. He invests $30,000 in a partnership that has four other partners. The total investment is 480000 What percent of the business does David owns? So, look at my, so this is how I solve it. So we're looking for the percent that David owns. Again, we have here so I wrote David over the total. So David is thirty thousand dollars. That's how much he put. That's the money he put. That's his capital. That's his capital. That's the money he invested. His business. He has a partnership. So that means that uh, he only owns the amount of money that he puts in. So let's see. Divide uh, what he puts in by the total. You see how many zeros? This has how many zeros? Four zeros. This has how many zeros? Four zeros. You know, you can just do this. Cross, cross this out. Cross that out. You're left with 3 over 48. Beautiful. Use your calculator to do this, and that will give you 0 0.0.0625. To get it in percent, you need to multiply by 100. You see right here. When you multiply by 100, the decimal moves two places. 1, 2. You're left with 6.25%. So David only owes 6.25% of the business. He doesn't owe that much. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed my video. And please uh, leave a comment, like the video, share it, and subscribe. Thank you.